Hello and welcome to another episode of this self-hosting series. Today we're going to be taking a look at health checks. Um, so for those of you that don't know, health checks is a monitoring system that can notify you if your jobs, your tasks, um, your scripts are not running on time. So here's their home page. You can see it's a nice, clean, simple home page. And then down here, they have a bunch of different examples, depending on what type of language you want to be using. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the instance that I have up and running. And so these are all the different things that I'm monitoring. Um, at the top here, I'm monitoring that my backup script runs on the Media Vault server. I'm monitoring uh, that it runs on the Think Center server as well. And then I'm monitoring that my uh, dynamic DNS script that I use through uh, the host that I have in FS is running as well. So that way I have a IP or a, a domain to always reach back home. And then down here, I'm also monitoring all the different services that I'm running. And basically most of these are just all Docker containers. So you can see they all say Docker next to them. You can uh, take can put tags next to your um, monitoring jobs here so that's kind of nice although with that said it was extremely tedious so I'm not sure if maybe you are more familiar with how health checks work I'd be very interested to know if there is a better way to add a, a bunch of jobs in here at, at one time or to do like a mass edit on them because it was really annoying to have to add all these in here the way that I did. So hopefully there's a better way of doing it. But basically I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to add a check here and uh, you know this would you can name it whatever that you would like. And to do that you can just click up right there give it a name. We're going to just name it test. And then this is where you can give it a tag too. So we're going to give it YouTube video, or YouTube will give it. All right, you can see all this information is up in here. You got the, the name of it, the tag is in there, the description. Now, here's, here's the URL that you use in order to ping it. And that's how it knows that your script has ran. Now, the other thing to take a look at in here is um, the current status is all good, but it has never received a ping yet. You can manually ping it here and you can pause it. And then here is the schedule. So you can set your schedule where this means if it has not received a ping in this amount of time, that's when it's going to go ahead and notify you that the script has not ran. So if you, you need your script to run every hour, this is what you would do is you change it every hour. And if it misses that hour, then it's going to notify you. Um, and then you can also set a grace period as well. Uh, you And so you can do it this way or you can set, if you have a cron job, you can just put, you know, the the schedule of the cron job right in here and uh, then you don't have to do like every hour or whatever if it's supposed to just run on like every February 2nd at 2 2 a.m. you can put that in here and then the notification method um, I have set to, to default And this is where you can just copy it or transfer this specific job or check, as they call it, or remove it. So we've done that. Now if we go back here, we can see it's it's down here, right? And then we would copy this and we would, you know, need to ping this depending on what language we're using. 
So if we had a simple bash script, we could just run curl against it. So we can pop that open and do a curl, paste that. And so that's done. So now if we go back here, you can see it's got a green check mark because it um, pinged it. So we know that's good. And so that our script runs, you know, every day, if we ping it, if we forget, or the script doesn't run within a day, then it's going to start notifying us. So we'll take a look at some of the other settings that we have here. I just want to remove this right now. And then we'll, we'll jump in and take a look at some of the settings that we can set for this. We'll jump up in the settings, and there's not a whole lot here. You can change the project name. Um, you can set up API access, which I've not done. I'm not familiar with that. Looks like they give you a very easy link to follow here for the documentation on that. And there's there's some other things here that I've not used as well. So um, if that's something you want to look into, I guess you'll have to check their their web page on it and their documentation. Over here, though, this I wanted to talk about. So this is it's called integrations. This is really where uh, it's you're gonna set how it notifies you. So I use email, right? And um, it it emails to this email, and then I get notified. I actually get notified on um, Telegram. So all my this is gonna be a little off off topic of this particular video but um, what what I use we'll just take a quick look at it's called uh, SMTP to telegram all right so this this runs an SMTP server on your LAN right just like all the other services that we're running it runs an SMTP server but then it instantly notifies you via Telegram. So if I'm on my phone, um, you know, I don't check my e emails very often. And I want to be notified when things are happening. And I want to be notified instantly. So the solution to that is this, SMTP to Telegram. And a lot of a lot of these uh, applications that we're self-hosting, these services that we're self-hosting, have email notifications built into them, right? Um, some of them even, like, uh, let's see, Sonar and, and LiDAR, some of the newer ones even have, like, Telegram notifications built into them. Some of the, the older ones, some of the more old-school ones, like Open Media Vault, do not. So... They only have email notifications built in there. But I want to be uh, notified right away, and I never check my email. So running SMTP to Telegram was the solution for that. And it works really good. Because in, in here, like, um, you can see I have it set. These are the, the settings for the server. It uses... Uh, 2525 is the port and you can set sender email so uh, that's the other nice thing where each server I can put a different sender email so it's like this one omv at mediavault.lan and it'll send the email to anything you want you take basically what I'm saying is take a look into uh, SMTP to telegram if if you've been looking at a decent way to get notifications Maybe that, I don't know if there's enough there for a video, but uh, here, here's the GitHub page for it. Take, take a look into it. So that's what I'm using anyway. That's what I'm using here to be notified if one of these checks fails. So if one of the checks fails, I'll be sent a message on Telegram and uh, I'll, I'll know that, you know, one of them went down. So the, the other thing I wanted to show is the the little script that I came up with to um, get the status of these Docker containers. So we'll ssh into 
the media vault server and then i put the script in user bin so it'll like grow and i use python so up here you can see at the very top left that it is a python script it imports a couple libraries and then i, I made this function right here so this this function check status and then you can see down here I'm running it a bunch of times check status check status check status um, and then what I'm passing it the name of the container and then the the link the health check link that needs to be pinged if the container is up okay um, and, and then uh, this code, some of this code you can find right on their site. So if we hit, hit Python, you can see it gives you two different examples. So if you're using the Python 3 library, you would use that. Otherwise, you would use this one. And this is the one that I'm using. So you can see it gives you, you need to import requests. This is the code it wants you to use to ping the... Um, the, the check URL and that's pretty much it. So you can see in my code over here, I've imported the requests and I'm using that code here. But anyway, I just walk you through so you can see what this is doing to check a Docker container if it's up or down. I'm sure there are, are simpler, more elegant solutions to this, but this is what my pea brain came up with so if you do have a better way of doing it let me know so what i'm going to bring up another ssh session just so i can show you all right so docker ps so i i need to sudo this the script runs as root but we're going to need to sudo sudo this so it's, docker ps shows you a list of all the um docker containers that are up and running so on this server i don't have many because this is the lower powered rock pro 64. i only have these containers running so that's what sudo docker ps does it just gives you a list and a bunch of information on the running commands now what i'm doing next is piping that into grep with the name of the container that I want to check. So let's see what that does. And let's do it for pi-hole. So now you can see that only returned the one line that has, you know, the, the word we're looking for in it, pi-hole. So that's good. And that's putting it into this variable here, output. And now we're checking basically if that variable is set or not. And if it's set, that means that we have something in it. Doesn't matter what's in it. We're not checking what's in it. We just want to know, is there something in that variable? If there is, then we're going to ping the health checker and let it know the script ran or the Docker container is up and running. Everything's good. If there's nothing in it, then we're just going to print uh, the, the container is down and move on to the next one. Because if, if we take a look, let me stop the uh, pie hole for now. All right, because and now if we check, we use that code that we're checking on on pihole with sudo docker ps piped into grep pihole. The the pihole container is down now. I just stopped it. Now if we run this, nothing. It, it returns nothing. Empty, empty string. So um, now over in here, it it would skip this line and it would not ping health check so and then it would just print that the container is down that's it that's all that would have happened all 
Now I better bring my uh, high hole back up real quick here. All right, and you know, obviously, if it doesn't receive a ping in the time frame that I specified, I'm going to get this is going to turn red and I'm going to get a notification on my phone that's letting me know the Pi Hole service is down and I need to check on it. So, yeah, that's basically it for this video. I'll throw this code up on my website so if you do want to use it for yourself it'll be there for an easy copy paste um, my my think center server needed uh, to use the other python uh, script from the health check site so i'll just show you that one here real quick too actually i'll just put it on my site i don't need to put that in the video well, uh, again, I thank you for watching. I'm going to have a lot uh, more content coming out more regularly as I'm getting settled into my new place. I appreciate you watching. You have a very nice day.